Good morning, and I welcome everyone to the National Galleries of Scotland Bill Committee's third meeting of 2015. Can I ask everyone um, to switch off mobile phones and any other electronic devices as they do interfere with the broadcasting system even when they are switched to silent? However, committee members may use tablets for committee business as the meeting papers are now provided in digital format. So welcome. And the first item in our agenda is to decide whether to take item three in private. Do our members agree to take item three in private? Agreed. Thank you. And then we can move on to agenda item number two. And the, the main item of our business today is to hear from the representatives of the City of Edinburgh Council following on from our session with the promoters at our last meeting. Graham Turry, Tully, sorry, Estates Services Manager, and Karen Stevenson, who's the senior, senior planner for the City of Edinburgh Council. Welcome to you both. Um, and I believe that, Karen, you may well have a short statement to make before we then... If that's Ask okay, I'd like to just do a, a, an introduction. Okay. That would um, be grand. Thank you. Thank you. The City of Edinburgh Council has a working relationship with the National Galleries of Scotland with regular collaboration on the management and maintenance and the operation of the Mound Precinct and the Western Link entrance within East Prince Street Gardens. In 2011, the Council, through its planning function, facilitated a piece of work with the galleries to review how further future investment in the area could best meet the needs of a variety of users and reinforce the special qualities of the galleries complex and its relationship with Prince Street Gardens and, of course, the surrounding area. In particular, the Council highlighted the problem of legibility of some of the connections for people navigating around and through the area. Prince's Street Gardens is a centrepiece of the heart of the World Heritage Site and provides a linking landscape feature between the old and new towns of Edinburgh. The Council has a management and conservation plan in place to guide changes to the gardens. The Council has continued a dialogue with the Gallery's design team during the development of their proposals and we agree that further work is required to take account of appropriate integration within the gardens. The Council's legal and property teams have worked with the galleries in the promotion of the bill and secured a mandate from the Finance and Resources Committee at a meeting on the 3rd of February to engage with the galleries on the sale of the land, and the terms of which would require further committee approval. The Council's planning authority has had pre-application pre discussions with the galleries and expect planning and listed building applications in due course. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you, Ms. Stevens for, Stevenson, for that. Um, I am aware now that there's a few of the questions that may well have been covered um, with your opening statement, but can I just ask you to expand? Um, when the promoters were here, they explained during the oral evidence that the Council agrees with the Bill and that there has been that close discussions um, with the promoter in relation to the project. Can I ask you to expand on these issues and the nature of the cooperation between the various council departments and the promoter, please? Yes, I, I touched on um, the an outline there of how far back the discussions have gone, and I think the um, original um, introduction and working um, partnership with the galleries um, as I say started quite a few years ago um, and we do have this constant relationship and working with them anyway about the management of the galleries um, so we have engaged principally through the planning department and the planning function of the council but planning have drawn together other departments within the council such as the parks department um, and finance and obviously my colleague here Graham in the property department as well as the arts teams and other management, transport, a whole range of departments actually interface on, on the gardens and the whole of the, the, the mound complex. So it is a complicated um, arrangement for us uh, and involves a number of people. 
So we've certainly had a lot of discussions about how we progress changes and look at changes and the implications of, of what the galleries may or may not have wanted to do. Um, and we've obviously been in, there on, in, in partnership and by the side during their own personal process on appointing the design team and thinking about the way that they could change the building. So we have attended design team meetings as well, um, but all on a sort of preliminary basis. So there's been no formal position as such in planning terms taken yet. That's still very much pre-application. Thank Great. you. Mr Tully, would you like to add yeah. anything? I'd just like to add that the, the, the council certainly is delighted to hear of the possibility of investment in the galleries and the council certainly at the uh, committee on the 3rd of February uh, supported the galleries in commencing uh, this process as, a, as the first stage to achieve uh, the improvements. <clears throat> Could I ask just um, a, a further question um, to detail and then I'll open it up to the other committee members. Um, could I ask you to explain the, the likely impact on the gardens during the construction? And I'm not sure who wants to answer that. Is it Mr Tully? Or... I can talk about that if you like. Yeah. Yes, Maybe in, in, in broad terms. Um, the actual building changes will obviously require to have sections of the gardens potentially may be closed off for sections of it, which which would happen in any development that takes place. I mean, when we have festivals and events, we have to restrict access in certain parts of the gardens. So I think people are used to that. And there are alternatives, and alternatives would have to be put in place. And there are alternative routes and accesses around because of where it's located in the city centre. So I think that would be reasonable to expect. OK, thank you very much. Mr Tully, sorry. I, I could just add that, you know, we're... State services, we would have discussions with our colleagues in parks um, and between the council and the galleries, we would enter into a licence agreement to govern the, um, the operations on site, um, method statements of working and hours of working, just to, so we can control how that will impact on the gardens. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. And could I... Now move over to my colleague Fiona McLeod, who has got Thank a few you. questions. Thank, Thank you. you. As you know, um, one of the primary purposes of the preliminary stage in looking at a private bill is on whether there is a need for a private bill. And I was wanting to ask the Council's views on why you have supported the National Gallery in going down the route of this private bill, especially when you look at in 2003 for the Playfair project, where the council first went to the court to dispose of the common good inalienable part of the process. But this time, the National Galleries has decided to put both into the one bill. And I wondered um, what the council's feeling on that was. I know that you support it. If you'd just like to kind of reiterate that support. I have to say I'm not a, a lawyer, but having you know, had discussions with the council's legal team they concurred uh, with the gallery's legal team that the uh, various legal hoops could be wrapped up in this single parliamentary process. Okay. So I'm probably, again, asking the wrong person the next question, which is in the 1991 Act that prevents the council from using the gardens for building on it, except for specific purposes, as you know, like for um, electricity generators and such like. Why there wasn't any consideration given to amending the 1991 Act in this position? Was the council worried that to amend the 1991 Act for this specific purpose would then have left the gardens open for a lot more development? I couldn't really comment on that right. finer point. Might be something that yes. we can write to the council yeah. and I think just. If you, you could write, we will be able to respond yep. to that for you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And now over to my colleague, Jean Urka. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Um, I just really wanted to ask you uh, if you could clarify the arrangements for the transfer of common good land 
and the council's evaluation of best value. And I'm really asking that because, uh, as you know, I mean, there could be a headline, you know, council sells off parts of Princess Street Gardens, shock horror. Now, obviously, I think this is absolutely a, a, a wonderful development for both, I think, uh, the council uh, and the gallery and more so the general public. But how do you handle, how, how do you, uh, evaluate that best value in terms of public concern. Mr. Yeah. I agree that there, there, there are sensitivities around the gardens and common good and clearly that the, sort of the entire principle of the project will be governed by both this process, the planning process, but in terms of the transfer arrangements, the council would appoint external valuers to assess the, the, the best value issue and that would look at the very fact that what is being uh, transferred is a quite a narrow strip about five meters wide um, which in itself I mean, doesn't have a, a, a lot of value on its own um, it would also uh, look at sort of um, the fact that the, the the gardens are hopefully uh, Will be the beneficiaries of some improvements to access, and uh, to, uh, so that will um, I feel like there'll be a basket of benefits, which will capture the, the issue of best value. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think when we when we did our site visit, it seems to me that there's uh, a very positive outcome in this instance, um, but it's important that that we record and, and I think acknowledge just what these are through this bill. And that there will be disabled access, I understand, and and uh, the monument to the, civil, the Spanish Civil War, which has kind of never really been given much prominence, will will actually be in a better place. And I I, I think would you agree that these are, these are benefits that we 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 would, if, for want of a better word, sell to the public, in terms of of better access and uh, a more enjoyable space. An improvement to the Playfair steps and so on. Absolutely, and, and as Karen mentioned, that once we've had a discussion um, and following the, the values assessment, we'll have, as a discussions about other terms, things like rights of access to maintain and, uh, and clean the, the facade that's being created, and all this will be documented in a report back up to committee, so that will be, you know, a public document. So they will see all the benefits uh, flowing from the project. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And okay, are we all okay? Could I? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Any other further questions? Um, could I ask um, the last question? You'll be glad to hear. Um, the legal obstacle in 1991 Act, and I'm aware that um, my colleague, but I just really want it to get it on record, um, is the same one which led to the Playfair project um, that needed to parliamentary approval in 2003. Although this doesn't relate to the bill itself, um, can you say whether you know, it needs for a, a more general amendment to be made to the 1991 Act so that there is an exception for public museums, galleries, i.e. so that the private bills are no longer needed for construction linked to such buildings in the garden. What would be your advice or your opinion on that? I think I would have to have discussions with our colleagues in, in, in parks to see if there are any risks associated with that. Because obviously there are sensitivities surrounding the gardens and their use. Mm -hmm. And it's quite difficult to, at this stage, uh, identify whether this would be opening the door to intrusions into, into the gardens. It's maybe, sorry, Miss Stevenson. No, I was going to say, to... In, in, in planning terms, certain specific uses are obviously defined in, in, the, in the planning legislation, but again, that would have to be something that would, ha there would be sensitivities there, I think, around those terms, which, which the legal experts would have to look at very carefully. It's maybe something that, as committee members, want to write to yourselves and 
hopefully get some clarification. So Mr. With adding, sort of associated with the sensitivities that in terms of the the sale of the 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 five meter strip and the and the development taking place on that, that we would be imposing restrictions on the use of that to gallery space mm -hmm. and ancillary uses. Uh, again, for the very reason that there are that sensitivities around the, the use of the of the gardens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that clarifies that. And if we need any further clarification, we will write to yourselves um, and hopefully get back to us to put that on record. And and I think that's all of the questions that we were aiming to ask um, from the committee this morning. So can I thank you once again for coming along this morning? And I know it's been fairly brief, however, um, fairly homes wholesome. And... Thank you again for, for coming along. And I think we are now moving on to the next item on the agenda, which now moves us into a private session. So I close the meeting. <laughs>